The future of UN peace operations also depends on concerted action to rid UN peace operations of sexual exploitation and abuse. What about the French Sangaris rapes? Oleg, go ahead. Your role in the Oleg. UNDT filing. Oleg. For <coughs> two peacekeepers who are spending months on end in very, very difficult conditions, you know, be it Kagabandoro, be it Bambari, be it Bria, I've gone to both uh, since the last year. Uh, I mean, comfort is uh, rudimentary. Uh, and of course, uh, there is no, um, how should I say, uh, distraction. Uh, no possibility to do anything to get your mind, you know, of uh, those very uh, difficult uh, living conditions. Uh, turning to the Central African Republic, the UN mission in that country, MINUSCA, says they've received an allegation of sexual exploitation committed by one of its civilian staff uh, on September 12th, 2015. On Mr. the same Lee. topic. Yes. Uh, I, first, would, I mean, does this person have immunity or would the UN waive immunity? I, I, immunity in criminal cases, uh, in all criminal cases, uh, does not apply. And if, if a case uh, were to go, a judicial case were to go forward, there, there would be no immunity for these actions, uh, clearly as they're not part of that person's work. When you say the person can't leave the country, is that by order, of the UN won't facilitate them leaving, we, or the CAR authorities? Uh, well, that's as far as, I, I'm speaking on behalf of the UN. And I guess they, I inevitably have to ask you this, since Mr. Ladsu said that one of the reasons these abuses take place is that people don't leave the country and go for R&R &R elsewhere, for recreation, it seems I, not I, I one is strange. Know, one, can Ma we say how long has the person been in the country? Ma Matthew, I think, uh, I think you're continuing to gain great pleasure in distorting what Mr. Letsus uh, said. He I, said I, I, listen, I've, I, I think you raised that issue yesterday. Mm -hmm. I, answered I answered clearly uh, this, is, uh, this is a case, a possible case of sexual mm -hmm. abuse. Uh, which is to be condemned and which will be pursued uh, as far as we can, both internally and with uh, the relevant uh, judicial authorities. How long has it been since the person left the country? Has, the reason it, I ask is that he made the linkage. He's the, the one the, that brought the, up Matthew, people traveling. Okay, I, I, will say this, I will say this one, one last time. Mm -hmm. Civilian staff and, intern, and, and military staff work under two different, uh, under two different regimes. Uh, so you're, to compare uh, soldiers uh, that have been in country in very difficult circumstances for three years and civilian staff uh, is not to be comparable. I, something, what I, I wanted to ask you this on Friday or Mr. Ladsus, but I want to ask you, he, from this podium, he said when in, in discussing rapes, he said that, that uh, peacekeepers there don't have enough recreation, that they don't have enough comfort. He, used the, he said that he would, there, there's, a, there's a looking into getting them flights to get fresh air. And although he did use the word, he's not excusing it. I'm going to tell, many people saw this as basically a statement that somehow linking the rapes to a lack of, of uh, think, other think, distractions, in other words. I think it's a complete misinterpretation of what Mr. Letsu said. Uh, he stressed a number of times that there was no excuse. Uh, then what about uh, the flights? Okay. Okay. okay, I'm sorry. I'm a little over-caffeinated today, so just bear with me. Um, he repeatedly said that there was no excuse for, for rape. Uh, Okay, um, that is clear, that is UN policy, and I think that's everyone's policy. There, there is no excuse for rape. What he said in talking about the case of one contingent that had been deployed in basically, you know, a very hardship peacekeeping operation for more than three years, when troops are not rotated, uh, when troops don't have uh, the, the, an opportunity uh, to be rotated out uh, for R&R, &R, and that's the truth for, for, for any armed forces, it creates the conditions where there can be all sorts of, of abuse or other things uh, developing. It is not an excuse for rape. And I think it's clear that we have seen um, uh, rape and horrendous sexual abuse uh, by soldiers in many parts of the world. Some of them come from very rich armies. Some come from very poor armies. Uh, there is no excuse. What he was saying, and I think people would agree with it, that three years for any contingent being stationed in, a, in very difficult circumstances is too long. Well, I guess what I want to say, a U.S. military, uh, an admiral in the Pacific was fired for comments exactly like that, for which the person excused himself and apologized, but he said Matthew, distraction, Matthew, Matthew, comfort. Matthew, I, 
I, I read what you wrote. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm aware of the other case. I think they, they're, they're not comparable. Where are the flights I, going? I, Where are the R&R no, flights going? I, I'm, I'm gonna, I, will, I, will come, I will come back. Sid Reis, yes. In Central Africa. Some have been deployed since the times of the African Union, 18, 24 months. Uh, they have no opportunity to uh, travel for rest and recreation because they don't get money. Uh, we do give uh, the member states uh, welfare money, but uh, I'm not sure that in many cases the soldiers see the color of it. So we are looking at uh, ways and means to provide them, you know, uh, for relatively cheap R&R uh, &R, uh, trips. But of course, again, it's difficult because Bangui is a very poorly served uh, airport. Uh, it's one or two planes a day, uh, and we have large constraints on our own air assets. But anyway, we're looking at it very closely and we'll see what we can do. I will not uh, deflower the subject uh, <coughs> to peacekeepers who are spending months on end in very, very difficult conditions, you know, be it Kaga Bandoro, be it Bambari, be it Bria, I've gone to both uh, since the last year. Uh, I mean, comfort is uh, rudimentary uh, and of course uh, there is no um, how should I say, uh, distraction. Uh, no possibility to do anything to get your mind, you know, of uh, those very uh, difficult uh, living conditions. Again, it's not an excuse, but I think we owe it to our people to afford them, you know, uh, the possibility of, as I said, a better welfare and uh, try and see whether we can charter planes, you know, to uh, just give them a f some fresh air by going elsewhere. Some countries do it, uh, especially countries from South Asia. They actually send uh, national flights uh, every few weeks, you know, to uh, rotate uh, their peacekeepers for a week or two. Uh, but of course, in the case of uh, poorer countries, it doesn't really happen. Uh, so we have to try and step in to compensate for that. What about the you. French Sangaris raids? Oleg, go ahead. And your role in the Oleg. UNDT filing. Oleg, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Latsos. <clears throat> you described the situation in which peacekeepers are working in CR, which harsh conditions. Hmm? Those incidents, if there are any other ones, uh, as they come. What, what do you mean? Firing the as whistleblower, as Anders Compass. What was your role okay, in Mr. Thank Compass? You. Thank it's you. listed in the UNDT filing. It should be answered. One more, one question, please. Shouldn't you answer that? No. It's